Uh, I was here in July to to sign the contract and to kind of hand over the site to to them. I I made a few remarks which I hope they are still ringing in their minds and they must continue ringing until we commission the project. Because I said to them that as uh, the GC and of course on behalf of the Council of Ministers, we are not going to tolerate any cost overruns. We are not going to tolerate any delays and will not accept any substandard, even if it's a one handle out of how many doors are in the building, I don't know. Even if it's one door handle out of 171, we will not accept that. Or if one tile is cracked, we will not accept that. So the quality that we expect out of this project, let it be so. Uh, Polish contractors. And also bear in mind that the funding of this project is from the various pockets or um, consolidated funds of various governments. It's not the regional center. There are 20 African countries which are members of this uh, regional center. The heads of state in those countries they have allowed it that this amount, I'll release it from my coffers so that it goes to the regional center. It's a contribution from my government. And it is our responsibility to ensure that those contributions are used uh, prudently. As the governing council, so far so good. We are happy with the way we see the center progressing and we believe there's so much more that can be done. And I just uh, uh, pray and hope that we continue with that uh, belief and faith in us that we can do more and indeed we shall do more. On the, the planning side, um, what has taken us to where we are. We do believe that we have a, a very strong business case. That is why the presentation or the delivery of that business case by the DG to the Governing Council opened the door to where we are today. We do believe that uh, those that we deem as the beneficiaries, being our students and us, those hotels say uh, they should start saying bye-bye to us. <laughs> Isn't it so, members? Yeah. So in 2023, because we commissioned mid-23, eh? November 2023, we won't be staying in that uh, hotel. We are always there as if we are even shareholders. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but this is where our shareholding is. So we'll see ourselves uh, in the next uh, two years uh, going forward, residing here and taking back the money into the regional center. We want to see the regional center in the future being uh, financially independent. And we always say when we are in these meetings that we are brothers and sisters. If um, the regional center can grow to that extent. It can be possible for us to collectively, as members, make a decision that uh, our sister country, so and so, or brother country, if they say English like that, <laughs> they really want to be part of the center. Or they need the services of the center more than Botswana, for example, who is already a member, who has been a member for so many years. We can collectively make a decision and say, uh, since financially, you know, we are no longer limping, can we just invite them in for two years without expecting any contribution from them? And then we do pro bono. 
Oh, Bruno Bono is also is only in law. <laughs> we give them services. What is it called? Did I say it properly? Yeah, we give them services for free. DG and his staff, they can go to that country, assess their needs, and help them. For free. Yes. And then the others who are able to join, they have the financial muscle, but they are not coming in. You see, they will come without even DG having to write so many letters and making visits to their country. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, contractor, and I also want to thank uh, the drawing man. Thank you very much. Can we clap for him? You do remember his presentations in our GC meeting, selling the idea to us, convincing us that we need uh, this uh, training center. So uh, Polish contractor, I've got so many witnesses. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all our eyes are on you, sir. Not yes. So we do trust you that you will deliver the project to the expected quality within the agreed timelines and budget. So thank you very much. What I can say to DG and his staff is that um, any work like this cannot proceed smoothly without your side doing your responsibilities uh, on time. So our eyes are not only on him, but also on you, uh, DG and your staff. So that whatever issues are there, they are resolved, uh, or we make sure that the risks do not turn into issues. So mitigate the, is the risks uh, as soon as uh, uh, possible. We are not going to tolerate uh, project br briefs that are full of uh, this word, which I don't like at all. Challenge, challenge, challenge. At least when you bring out the challenge, bring out the solution in one sentence. You hear a contractor? <laughs> we are paying you to bring solutions, not to bring us uh, challenges. And we selected you because we believe that as you work, whatever challenge you meet, you'll be able to bring uh, the solution immediately. And where you are stuck, DG is here to intervene and make sure that everything is seamless and delivered on time. I thank you. My name is Nduta Mukota. I'm a student at RCTI, which is a branch of RCMRD. And uh, I'm a second year student. Uh, RCTI is a very good school, in my opinion. Uh, we are exposed on every aspect of surveying. It comes to learning, it comes to instrument, it comes to field work, computations, all good. Uh, yes, and we have a variety of Technically, all the instruments that we need in our learning, our teachers are very versant in every area and we are comfortable with them. And I believe there is more for us as women in the field of land surveying for us to pursue and for us to go for. Uh, I picked this because I'm passionate about being in the field, uh, mathematics, uh, yes. And I think I love this, I'm loving it. I commute from Goomba, Goomba Estate, which is next to breweries. Uh, I, use, I use 20 bob coming uh, using public means and 100 bob uh, using Piki Piki Buddha Buddha. That is, it's going to be of help to many students who will be here, who will be learning here, because uh, it's going to be affordable, close to the school, and for most inter international students, uh, it's going to cut their hustle for a place to stay. Uh, I've gone through the plan and uh, it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be awesome. There'll be gym, there'll be a swimming pool, uh, there'll be a restaurant, there'll be a whole uh, huge parking at the basement, there'll be a clinic, there'll be uh, study areas, Wi-Fi for us. 
yeah, yeah. And then there'll be the sports, the the sport place, whether tennis, basketball. Yes. So I believe it's gonna be huge. Plus the rooms will be spacious, uh, single rooms, uh, sharing, double sharing. There'll be four, four sharing, six sharing. Uh, if your worry is coming to Nairobi and lacking a place to stay, our CTI has a place for you to stay. So let that not bother you. It's gonna be affordable. It's gonna be close to the school, so there is no transport cost. Uh, it's gonna be comfortable, and I believe you're gonna love the area. You're gonna like it. Yes. So let that not hinder you from coming to join us. Plus the learning, super. What you doing here? My name is Yunus Aba. I'm from the Gambia. I'm studying diploma in land surveying. Here I find it nice. I'm enjoying it. I have settled well now. I've seen different cultures, yes, and Kenya is far bigger than the Gambia, yeah, and I'm enjoying it here, I'm learning here as a land soil. Comparing Kasarani and Gambia, okay, I find it, this place is more big than the place I was in Gambia because Kenya is more big than the Gambia, yes. So when I was in Gambia, I used to pay fare and go and work, but here, I just, it's a, just a, a working distance, you come to the school. Like, yes, we are coping, we are enjoying, so the lecturers are doing good. Yes, the lecturers are really doing good. Uh, it will be good for students coming in. Those students, we, you know that they don't have place to stay. So this, this hostel, they are building two, two approved hostels, but they are building the one at the moment. So initially they have 420 beds, but now they have extended to 500 beds. You have single rooms here, you have sporting facilities. For example, gym is here, if you want to stay fit, you can come and train. You have uh, tennis, basketball, volleyball, and so on. And rooms, you have single rooms, you have rooms for two, you have also salary rooms up to six. And all the rooms contain self-contained, they have self-contained, you have bathroom, you have good studying tables and chairs. Yes, you also have a clinic for health facilities. You have securities, CCTV cameras, internet are here, swimming pools are here, the hall also is here, and parking spaces. So it's a nice place. Okay, I want to tell them when they come to this place, if they, if they don't have a place to stay, they can come to RCTI. We have hostels here under construction. Very soon, they will be ready. We have so many facilities here, and it is affordable. Uh, anyway, what I want to add, this school is a good school. It was recommended to me by a friend from, he's a Kenyan, he was in my country, the Gambia. He was there working on the UD, UNDP for four years. He's the one who recommended this school for me, then I applied. So I got this school, I came here, I'm studying Diploma in Land Service because I want to be a surveyor. So I'm encouraging all international students, if you want to do land surveying, cartography, or anything you want to study, you can come to RCTI. Yes, the lecturers are doing good and they are taking care of their students. My name is Ivari Nwangari Nyaga. I am a first student at RCTI, which is a branch of RCMRD. I am taking diploma in photogrammetry and remote sensing. Uh, I expect that the commuter time and fare, that is the price, will be reduced since the hostels are a walking distance to the school. And I expect also for availability of amenities that will enable students to pursue their interest and talent. The commuting time, if you're living outside, a challenge of commuting every morning, you have to, to get up early to, to make it to school early, and you also have to pay an extra amount of fare to make it to school, which is a bit expensive. So since the hostel comes with uh, social amenities, such as uh, Wi-Fi and uh, swimming pool, and uh, basketball courts and all the other um, recreational facilities, we expect that students will now be able to pursue their interests, they will be able to have fun, and they will be able to also uh, interact with each other. Uh, welcome to, to RCMRD, it's an international school. Here you're guaranteed to get the best education there is, especially in courses of surveying, cartography, and remote sensing. Uh, because our teachers are also professionals in the LCMRD organization. So there's availability of uh, knowledge and skills from the teachers. 
I did a Bachelor of Arts in Geography and Environment Studies and Language and Communication at the University of Nairobi. I changed to photogrammetry because after I, I worked for almost two years, I found a gap where they needed uh, photogrammetry, didn't really have much, much labor available. Plus, I have a passion for photos and interpreting them. I really find it interesting. Once the new hostels are constructed, uh, the commuter time and prices they are going to reduce since the hostels are walking distance to the school. The security is guaranteed because these security guards at the gate and at the hostels and there's also CCTV cameras and also the access to the hostels will be by a biometric card so not everyone will get access to the hostels just those people who are residents in the hostels. My name is Boichi Motuaseli from Botswana. I've been here for the past three years doing a diploma in cartography and the challenges that I've met here or what I've noticed are staying outside the school or not having hostels belongs to the school is more expensive uh, in terms of the money that we spend outside it destroys the price that we are paying for a term in school so I think with the new uh, building which is coming up to accommodate students it will cut the cost uh, for locals and for international students apart from that uh, the welfare of student again, uh, more especially the international student who are from outside, it is very difficult to be uh, in apartment outside the school, but once they are accommodated in the school, it will be more beneficiaries to them because uh, the hostel will be having a clinic and more other facilities. The other facilities we are looking at the internet that we, as we are outside the school, we have to pay for that on our own. Uh, electricity bills and uh, water bills but once they come to the school uh, all those things will be provided again even the prices of buying bears and that will be a history after the new hostels are complete I'm very grateful to the idea because it is also accommodating everyone including uh, those who are old enough to be staying alone, there will be some rooms for individuals, there will be some rooms for sharing, which I think it is a very good move. What I can say to international students is, uh, you are welcome to Kenya. Uh, now you'll be having accommodation within the campus. There will be no cost for uh, transport fees. And again, your welfare will be more are safe than us who are staying in apartments outside. On top of that, security, it will be one of the best, that uh, everyone has to be free to come and join RCMRD. Thank you yet again. Um, we are here in Nairobi, Kenya, at the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development, RCMRD in short. This is a regional center owned by 20 African countries, um, led by ministries in those countries which are responsible for land management in their respective uh, countries. Today we have a, a project that I've just uh, performed, it's groundbreaking, where we are building the hostels. As the governing council, the governing council being a structure that is made up of all the permanent secretaries or principal secretaries or director general, whatever they are called in the countries, um, where we are here on our annual meeting, but we decided to do also the groundbreaking for this project, which is the construction of hostels. Um, as you might be aware, the regional center is also a trading institute for uh, experts or those uh, with the skills or want to acquire skills or improve their skills in 
issues of land management, issues around geospatial uh, data and so on and so forth. So this, um, the hostels that are being constructed here, the project is uh, 18 months. Um, they've just uh, started, so by 2023, the project should be up and running. It was awarded to Polish uh, contractors and Polish contractors, we've worked with them as the regional center in the construction of uh, the headquarters, the building uh, uh, behind you, uh, gentlemen. And the procurement process uh, was thorough, um, following every process uh, expected, and they came out uh, victorious. Therefore, having delivered that massive and beautiful structure behind us on time, to cost and to the expected quality. We are very confident that they will do the same, even this time around, that the hostels will be delivered on the agreed amount, under the agreed time, and they will give us the product uh, that we want as the regional center. It is, uh, it is uh, important for us as the governing council, and of course, the council of ministers, which is a structure above us, made up of uh, the ministers in those 20 countries that this uh, project is completed on time because it is going to save us costs. Currently one might ask or even wonder where the 800 and plus students who are here in uh, our training school, where do they lodge? They are all over in Nairobi and they, we found it fit and cost benefit, uh, beneficial to have our own uh, accommodation for our own students um, where they can pay a little fee and uh, that goes back into the coffers of the centre. It will help us to run the centre better and even introduce some services or even uh, more packages when it comes to training that we have not been doing and be able to see um, the food of the centre um, going further than it has been uh, uh, going. We have countries which are not yet members and we really want them to be part of us. If we have more resources, we can be able to even go to their countries and offer those services uh, free so that they can learn and uh, understand what the centre is all about and what they can benefit from it if they do uh, become members. The construction, um, as I said, that is made up of uh, 20 uh, countries. We have uh, annual subscriptions um, as members and the construction or the, the funding of uh, the contract is from um, those uh, subscriptions. And we are happy with the, the way the centre is being run uh, at the moment under the current uh, DG, um, that they are running it uh, prudently um, that uh, even from their savings, they are able to uh, provide some sort of uh, funding to, to the project. And this is what we want to see the centre being like in the future, where it can be in, um, independent and, you know, more from the annual subscriptions, but be able to um, produce or have money on their own that they can use without it depending on the subscriptions. And I do believe that's where we are going. There are more projects coming. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, my name is Emmanuel Nkurunziza. I'm the Director General of the Regional Centre for Mapping of Resources for Development. Today is a very important day uh, because we are breaking ground for a new development uh, that will house hostels for our training institute but also have accommodation for trainees from our member states. So RSMLD is owned by 20 countries and uh, one of our major responsibilities is capacity building. So we have trainers, we have trainers, uh, both uh, the diploma and certificate course students who are here full time, but we also receive trainees uh, from our member states, but also from across the continent. Because even right now we have uh, people from Liberia who have been here for two weeks and are taking training. So all those people when they come here, they require accommodation.
So part of our plan is to make sure they're able to find all the services uh, they need, including the hostel that we are starting on today. As I said, we support member states in all fields related to uh, surveying and mapping. Uh, and with the advancement of technology, now many countries are going the digital way. So we've been working with the countries to change their analog processes and uh, documents into more digital that is easier to access and provide services. Uh, for example, the government of Kenya, you know, is uh, undertaking digitalization process with the Aldi Sasa that they launched recently. And we've been working with the government in training some of their staff in more uh, skills with the digital era. At the beginning of this year, we had over 250 staff from the Ministry of Lands uh, learning QGIS and other techniques uh, so that they can be able to be tooled uh, to serve the new dispensation, which is digital. My name is Julius Kishoi. I'm the Acting Director, Capacity Building and uh, Training in RCMRD. In RCMRD, we have RCMRD and we have RCTI, which is Regional Center Training Institute, which I'm the one that I head, and which will be the owner of the hostel that we are building. They are students who are the ones who will be staying in this hostel. Yeah, okay. The, the reason why we decided to come with this hostel is because most of our students, we have a capacity of more than 800 students now, and most of them have been looking for accommodation outside. We've been having some number of challenges whereby some students stay in a bad environment, some of them are not able to come to school, and uh, things like that. And so that's the reason why we decided, can we come up with hostels so that we accommodate them in, within the, the compound? We'll also be trying to follow up about their bit of behavior. We know they are adults, but with, with, with them being adults, there is need for them to be within some environment of education so that their behavior and education can go together. So that's the reason why we did that. We have actually, our aim is to be able to accommodate as many as we can so that we, the, the current construction will be able to accommodate about 550 and uh, so that will be a good percent. And then we are hoping with time we will also increase and be able to accommodate more. Uh, I would like to tell the student that we are coming up with a high standard hostels which will accommodate them and will give an environment, an academic environment, such that they are going to stay here. They are not going to be police like kids, but they are also going to be told that there are rules and regulations which they must live within. And we also want to boost them. It is, we are doing it for their own good, so that they can be able to do their education and they can be able to succeed and become good citizens and be able to provide, to provide and they're, they're to be able to provide for their future. That's what I would tell them. And I would tell them to be able to start booking. In the next about six months, next year, we are going to start to open the booking list so that the earlier you book, the faster you'll get and you'll be assured. We are going to initially open it for our own students, but in future, we are also going to open it for students who are outside. Uh, my name is Samuel Mwati. I work for Ministry of Lands and Settlement. Uh, Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning here in headquarters and we work in partnership here with the regional centre as the host country. We support them and we also provide them with avenues wherever they need any issues with government and that is why we are here. Uh, the impact, first of all, uh, the 800 students are basically Kenyans. RCMRD has a membership of 20 countries. So part of the scholarships, uh, part of the, the the hostels are supposed to host students from other member countries. You can, uh, you can be sure there is a challenge of accommodation, it is expensive. But if we had hostels here, uh, we would be able to, to, uh, to accommodate uh, more of our countries. And by the way, there is a shortage of uh, trained people in survey, uh, cadastro and such things eh, in other African countries, even here in Kenya. And that is why the school is here. There is also another one at Survey of Kenya called Kisim. But we need that partnership to also strengthen our friendship and relationship with other African countries. Yeah. My name is Peter Njeru. I'm the architect for this project, the hostel project that has been uh, launched today by the Governing Council of RCMRD. This project, uh, the construction period is estimated to be 16 months, which is almost about uh, one and a half years. And it's a project which will be able to um, accommodate about 550 beds, student beds. It's a unique project in, in, uh, in a way because we have four different room typologies. 
It's a hostel which has so many amenities that will be able to uh, keep the students busy. We have indoor rooms, we have um, Olympic sized swimming pool, we have uh, tennis courts, volleyball courts, uh, we have shops, we have even a dispensary, a small clinic, um, a restaurant, amongst many other facilities uh, that will be able to keep the students busy as they go through their education work within the institute. Well, this is one of the projects that we are looking forward to have it certified as a green project. Uh, it's a project that uh, will be purely uh, relying on alternative energy to uh, power its, um, uh, its services, especially the common, uh, common areas. Uh, it's one of the projects that we are intending to harvest uh, rainwater. It's one of the projects that we, uh, we are fully relying on uh, natural ventilation. And uh, within the next few months, we'll be able to have our certification, uh, making it one of the green buildings within uh, the city of Nairobi. I am the director of Polish Contractors, currently undertaking this project of uh, RCTI hostels. This came about in terms of the procurement process, the intent of the client, doing an expression of interest. We got interested and uh, apparently the process was about one year ago and uh, we happened to have qualified amongst uh, about seven others. But predominantly, as you could tell from the master plan and the drawings, this is a, a six-story building plus one underground parking. So in essence, the methodology of construction is predominantly, first of all, excavation after getting the depths right. And then, of course, uh, we start doing the substructure up to the surface level, which is the ground level. From there, now we start doing the structure itself. So we intend to do it in one and a half years uh, all going well because apparently the geotech survey that was done shows there's a bit of rock here so the rock part because we're going a bit uh, underneath for one the, first, uh, the underground floor so basically we'll do the excavation and remove the, a bit of the rock to get that headroom so that is what could take a bit of time but predominantly we'll want to work within the one and a half years that we scheduled yeah, well, the challenges we'll be looking at most likely is uh, the, 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 what is called substructure. The substructure element is when you get a very rocky area like here, it takes a bit of time to get to the base where you want to start your, your building. But it's also a blessing in this case because the rockier it is, the better the structure in terms of uh, structural comp composition of it. So the other challenge predominantly is the escalating prices of materials. Well, you, 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 as you heard, this process uh, was finished like six months ago. Between six months and now, there's been quite a bit of price variations in terms of materials. And uh, the effects of COVID are now being seen now because imports have not been coming. Whatever is coming in is at exorbitant prices and more so the steel. And uh, whenever fuel is increased, it spirals all other components of uh, production. Well, that is why we are here. As an NCO one we have our internal mechanisms of sorting out challenges that we face along construction. So basically we have a team of our engineers as well. As much as we have consultants, we get to challenges but we also get solutions to the challenges only to get to the consultants to verify that what we want to do is in line with their thoughts as well. The building is a student capacity of 550 as of now. Yes, uh, there, there, there's a mixed use. There are singles and doubles and uh, shared rooms. So, but they're all self-contained. Ideally, we are trying to have not an eye end, but a middle end for purposes of at least uh, getting the catchment area of the population target. Right. Well, apart from the rooms, uh, from your master plan, you must have seen a, a swimming pool. There'll be a swimming pool, there'll be the play yards, the courts for basketball, tennis ball, volleyball, all will be in this face. Otherwise, the other faces, there'll be other components. But in this face, there'll be the swimming pool and the courts, the basketball courts, the tennis courts, and the volleyball yard. Here. Well, I just want to thank the client for having confidence in us, having built the first, uh, the headquarters 
and now we are privileged again to showcase what we do best and we thank them very much and we are here and I promise that yes we will showcase what we do best.